name's Marina English. I work in the outreach team at London Metropolitan University. Welcome to the In Conversation With series. And today I'm in conversation with Angelos Grisogolos, who is a lecturer in international relations. Hi, Angelos, how are you? I'm all right, Marina. International relations. Well, there's a lot of people who have actually not heard of international relations degrees. What kind of topics would the student cover? So we do look at questions of the international order. We do look at questions of international institutions. We do look at British politics. We do look at US politics and US foreign policy. Uh, we have people specializing in many other parts of the world, uh, the Middle East, Turkey, uh, Asia. Uh, I do Europe, um, I do Europe as well. But it's really distinct and pretty interesting for us. And it's also really fascinating and really exciting for me having joined and met is the perspective we bring to uh, all those things, the voices we like to raise, uh, the uh, normative way that we approach many of the questions of international order, uh, international justice. Uh, in that sense, our degree is both is as multivaried and as fascinating and as uh, multidimensional as many other degrees that you would find there. But I think we are bringing a very uh, important perspective and one that um, uh, very kind of new, novel, critical perspective that I think students at London Med always find very uh, interesting. Some they can always relate also to their own lives, their own experiences and the ways they want to move forward in life. What kind of careers or further studies do uh, London Met IR graduates do? So when you study British politics at London Met, you hear about how the government or how the parliament works, right? That immediately becomes something that you yourself can look into getting a job in, getting an internship in, you know, slowly getting on. Or when um, we discuss about Europe, uh, which is particularly now in the UK a pretty uh, important topic, you hear about European institutions. In incidentally, the EU is not the only European institution that the UK is a member of. So there's also career opportunities and kind of ways that you can engage with those things later on. And of course, we have this, uh, particularly in the UK, this thriving um, NGO sector, which touches on a lot of the topics, the environment, uh, uh, new social issues, new social movements, a lot of the things that we are discussing uh, in our degree at MET uh, as well. You can really feel not only about places you want to work in, but even countries you want to work in, things that you want to work in, parts of the world. There's, there's really a big, big variety. And as you said, there's also um, a big possibility for further study. So we've had students from London Med who went on to really, really good universities later on to do their masters. And I think this sequence actually makes a lot of sense, uh, starting from a place like London Met, a place where in your formative years as a student, you're taken really good care of, and then you're kind of perhaps ready to move on to the um, to a bit of a slightly uh, higher uh, challenge. And we've even had students who went on to do PhD degrees in, uh, pretty, good, uh, in pretty good universities. And at the other end of the degree, if a student is in a school or a college now and thinking about doing an IR degree, is there a particular resource that you could recommend them looking at now before they start this degree? I would say try to get themselves uh, involved a bit with some of the serious press, try reading uh, the news in a critical way. A lot of the things I know that a lot of students and a lot of young people these days get them through, through social media. Uh, and social media is very, very important in some terms. We actually teach about social media. We actually teach about digital diplomacy. It's also another topic that we're doing. Um, but I would really advise students not to be intimidated to go to some authoritative sources of information and start engaging with them in order to understand them straight from the source. So we as teachers provide you know, this impetus, this direction. But ultimately, as a student, it's only a student, but as a citizens, you know, read the good newspapers from all, part of, all parts of the aisle. Go on the website of the government, go on the website of the EU, and go on the website of the, of the United Nations, uh, go on the website of the US Congress. But this information is there for you to make your own mind about it. And when you come and you write your essays, these are the places we want you to go to, to find your uh, information. You wanna have first-hand information so you become your own filter. It's your own thinking that makes you understand about how it should be. Now let's turn to you, Angelos. What about your own career path? How did you get to where you are today? Uh, through traveling, through a lot of, <laughs> a lot of traveling. Uh, it's, uh, 
there's nothing really amazing about my career path. I finished my PhD here in Florence, uh, spent a few years bouncing around because that's the academic market uh, nowadays. Uh, I taught in Ireland for a year and a half and then moved to London, uh, worked in uh, Chatham House, the Royal Institute for International Affairs for, uh, uh, for um, half a year. I'm still affiliated with them. Uh, Worked at the London School of Economics as a one-year fellow. I taught for two years at King's College, then spent a year in America at Harvard. And out of Harvard, uh, also did a Fulbright there, Fulbright scholarship, and out of that, just got my job at uh, London Met. Okay, well, Angelos, thank you so much for answering all the questions. It's been a pleasure talking to you. So thank you and goodbye. Well, thank you for the conversation. Bye.